Hey, what's up guys? This is Eric with Ozone TCG. Today we're taking a look at a top 8 deck profile from the battlefield with Cardiff WCQ Regional. Um, so this is a UK based event that took place over the weekend from Luke Delaney. And shout out to both Luke Delaney for this awesome list as well as YGO Pro deck. Um, they are part of the Friends of the Channel. Um, they're not, not sponsored or anything, but we really do appreciate what they've done. Um, Alan, the owner, um, absolutely fantastic dude. He provides some amazing archive content articles. Please check them out. Again, not sponsored, but really, I really like the website. Um, I use it all the time. Let's go ahead and get to this deck profile. Before we do, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. All right, so as you guys can see on the screen, we have this really interesting deck profile. Um, the format has changed quite a bit. Um, Sword Soul is, of course, still one of the best decks. Um, just playing the Fibrax version, this is a really interesting take on the deck. Um, OCG has been playing this for about two or three months now. Um, a similar version, not playing exactly all the cards. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at this list. So this is a Adventure Tenny Sword Soul Dragon deck list, and it plays some artifact cards as well. The idea is to set up a Scythe Lock using Double Baron to Floor, or go into Naturia Beast, um, and you send, you don't play Dagda at all, so you send it off of Shooting Rise of Dragon, revive it after making two Baron to Floors. Um, one of those Barons is going to revive it, uh, revive the Scythe from the Graveyard, uh, summon it back, and then you have protection from uh, that Scythe being negated. Um, yeah, so I'm really curious to see how this deck works in action. I know he gave a combo video uh, when he did his original deck profile. I really want to see this played more, though. I really like the Tenyu cards. They're some of my favorite things in the game. Um, yeah, so let's get right on into it. So, of course, he's playing the Adventure Engine. Pretty standard 9 to 10 card engine, depending on if you play Foolish or not. Luke decided to play it in this case. Um, of course, we have the three Aquamancer, one Griffin, triple right. One Fateful Adventure, one Draco back, and one Foolish Burial. This is one of the best engines I think ever printed. The fact that it gives you an Omni Negate and it gives you an Equip, it gives you a plus one off of right for free. Um, uh, Fateful Adventure randomly gives you protection, you can add stuff. Aquamancer kickstarts everything, it's level 3, it can even special summon itself. It also gives you a plus two if you play a field spell, it does too much honestly i think this engine's gonna get hit eventually um pretty soon i could see it but for right now we are playing this engine this is if your deck does not play this engine it's either regular sword soul or probably not doing very well um that's just how it is uh this deck absolutely needs to play adventure um, and really most decks need to play the adventure engine you see a lot of phantom knights prank kids and even dragon link playing this this kind of engine this both provides a either a negate or a level 7 extender and we'll get into that in a little bit I'm going to show some replays using this version of the deck I'm also going to offer an alternate version of the deck um, kind of what I was taking a little bit from this maybe changing up some cards you guys will see that near the end of the video but yeah so then we have the Deskbot 001 this is what you summon off of um, Christron Halky Fibrax and then you go into Mecha Phantom Beast Aurora Dawn um, and then it summons itself back when you summon your three Mecha Phantom Beast tokens. Um, this is the best one to summon right now because we don't have uh, O-Line in the game. We also don't have Jet Synchro in the game. They've been banned for um, over a year at this point in the TCG. And then we have the 10 E cards he's playing straight three of Three Ashuna, three Vishuda, and three Ashuna. Um, yeah, or Adhara rather. Um, Ashuna just summons a monster from the deck, a 10 E monster from the deck. Vishuda... Uh, provides uh, disruption in the form of bouncing a, a card the opponent controls uh, during your turn if you control non-effect monsters. That counts your adventure tokens too. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, you can you if you summon you know your adventure token, place your fa uh, faithful adventure from your deck. Um, you can use Vishuda's effect even in the hand too, and it, you don't have to have a tenu monster. You just have to not have a non-effect monster, and all tokens are non-effect monsters. In fact, they're normal monsters. Every single one of them. Um, that's part of the game rules. Um, so you can also special summon your 10 monsters if you have the token. And the token is actually a level 4 Earth Fairy. That comes up in the later. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit in the extra deck. Um, of course, the level 7 10 is some of the best cards. And the Adhara is a level 1 Earth Tuner. 
Um, absolutely, really, really cool. Absolutely fantastic engine. Um, Ashuna you can summon itself for free. Um, they all can. And then you can normal summon it hard too. Um, yeah, really, really cool engine. And then we have the Dragon engine. This plays one Rocks Rose debuting in Lightning Overdrive, as well as Basil Rose Shoot. Uh, it acts like a pseudo extender, or if it's destroyed while well, it's set, you can special summon um, a Rose Dragon as well. And Red Rose Dragon, which if it's used for a synchro summon as material, you can special summon a Rose Dragon from the deck. And then in Rocks Rose Dragon, searches Basil Rose Shoot, and you go from there. You can either use it as extender or destroy it with Bashia, which we'll get into later with some of the replays. And then we have the Sword Soul cards. We have Moye, Taya, Long UN, Emergence, and Blackout, just all one ofs, straight one ofs, of course. Um, you can search these, every single one of these cards is searchable. M more than half the deck is searchable by cards you play in the main deck. Um, so, yeah, you don't really need to play, I'd say, anymore, because then it gets into more of a pure soul, soul, uh, Sword Soul version. Um, and really, you're summoning uh, Taya and Moye from the deck off of Yazi, Evil of the Yangzing, and Long UN, you search or Emergence or Blackout off of your Chi Shao. Uh, then we have the Artifacts, Triple Lancia, and Scythe. Scythe is part of the lock combo that most decks are playing right now. And then the Triple Lancia is really interesting because it does shut down a lot of other adventure decks and Phantom Knights in particular. You know, if you're playing against the Mirror, for example, or even Sword Soul Tenyi, they, they have a lot of uh, difficulty playing around this card unless they're playing something like Gamma or they see the Call by the Grave, something like that. Um, I think Valancey is a really, really good choice, was a really good choice for Luke in, in this regional, um, especially if there are a lot of adventure players, which I would say that there are, especially now. Uh, it's just a good card overall. Honestly, I would probably be fine maining this card now. Um, really, really good. And then, of course, Triple Ash Blossom. You gotta play the card. It, it does too much. It's Ash Blossom. Negates Fiber Axe Effect. Um, negates, you know, and, uh, Ashuna, and negates a bunch of other monsters and card effects that are in the game. You just gotta play three. The Devil Cosmic, I know, is for um, just generic removal. Good card. I mean, there's nothing else to really say. It's that between that and Twin Twister, I guess he valued the he'd rather pay the life points over than discarding one. I I think I agree with this deck because um, you don't really want to be discarding because you have to discard for Fateful Adventure um, and some of the the Fibrax combos do take a lot of hand advantage away from you. And then. Call by the Grave to negate that Veiler, to negate that Ash Blossom, or Ogre, because Ogre is seeing play now in the format, potentially even Ghost Reaper. We may see that popping up a little bit more. Um, that's played um, to negate all of those effects because they are um, impactful when they are trying to stop your Fibrax or even a Roradon, uh, Veiler, Ghost Ogre on a Roradon. Um, and then the triple Forbidden Droplet, this helps, break, uh, this helps prevent the Scythe from locking you if your opponent doesn't structure plays correctly, especially the Phantom Mites version. Um, and then some of the other Scythe, uh, Scythe combo, Scythe lock decks um, can't play around it. Some of them can though. Really interesting to distinguish though, but they cannot play around both Lancia and Droplet. That comes up in a bunch of different matchups and it Lancy and Droplets also come in, uh, uh, come up in random uh, situations as well. I know one of the other um, Scythe Lock decks is playing Sangan. I did see that. We will be covering that shortly. I really like that deck too. But they actually plays Herald of Arc Light, which prevents you from activate or from sending monsters from your hand because uh, Droplet sends its cost. You can't send its cost if they are going to be banished instead, so you can't send monsters. You can still send spells and traps, but that means that they're barren or anything else can negate it. A Naturia Beast, for example. But yeah, so that's the main deck. I think the only thing I'd like to see, honestly, is maybe e -Tally. It's hard to fit e in the second some punk cards because I like the punk cards a lot as well. Um, you could fit a small engine of four and then the three e in there, maybe like one Foxy Tune, two Zeman, and then one Madam Spider, three e something like that. I don't think you would really need to push it though. I don't think they're necessary in this version. Um, I think this list is really good overall. Um, I don't think he would have changed anything. I definitely wouldn't have changed anything myself while I were playing this deck. Really, really solid main deck. I really like this. And then for the extra deck, I know in his deck profile on the link channel, which I'll put in the description below, um, he mentioned that he never played the second Chi Shao, so you wouldn't really need to play it. But in this case, he did enter the tournament with two Chi Shao, one Chunging, and double Baron. Double Baron again does come up where you summon the two Baron. And then you use one of them to revive your artifact scythe that you dump off of shooting riser shooting riser acts like a fake foolish burial you use shooting riser during your turn and then during your opponent's turn you can't activate its effects in this case the 
uh, effect to um, lock the opponent from summoning from the extra deck is an activated effect, of course. If you do it on your opponent's turn, you would not be able to activate that because of Shooting Riser's effect. And yeah, so he plays a double Baron for that play. It also helps play around uh, a really bad droplet or a, a just an imperm. Um, you can make this early in the combo because you can summon a level three tuner and then use Griffin um, to turn your negate into a negate. Um, yeah, really, really cool interaction there. And then we have the Yang Zing synchros Bashia and Yuzi. Bashia you summon when you want to destroy Basil Rose that is part of one of the combos um, to get to your Scythe Lock combo or to get to Baron. And then Yuzi you use it to get any of your Sword Soul monsters from the deck. Um, you actually tribute Aurorodon to destroy your own Yuzi. It's a really, really cool way of using Aurorodon. I really like it instead of using it to summon um, a Colt Wing from the deck or Arrow Squid in, you know, in random, random builds of the deck. Um, but really cool interaction. Of course, we covered Shooting Riser. And then the last Sword Soul Synchro is the new one, Qixing Longyuan. Um, Longyuan's evil form. If your opponent special summons a monster, you can banish it. If they activate a monster effect, you can banish it. If they activate a spell or trap card or effect, you can banish it. And then all of those effects inflict 1200 each. You can only use each effect once per turn. Um, not the special summon monster, that's, that's, if they activate a monster effect. So if they special summon, say, um, if they want to activate the Tenny Monster Effect of Special Summon or Griffin, you banish it from the hand, inflict 1200. Um, that's that stipulation in there. And then every time you Synchro Summon, um, once per turn, you can draw a card if you Synchro Summon a Worm, Synchro Monster. Really cool effects, you can only use each effect once per turn. Then you played Virtual World uh, QB Shen Shen as level nine. Um, There's some ways to make level nine monsters, really cool interactions as well with that. Um, it's also just a really solid card, like going into some boards, or just as an end piece in case they hand trap you and you don't have the appropriate cards to combo or play around um, those interruptions. And of course, Nigeria Beast. <clears throat> this is what I'm talking about. This was one of the coolest additions. So this is what I was saying. The Rite of Aramisir token is an earth monster and Adhara is also an earth monster. Nigeria Beast requires two earth monsters. That is the only way to summon in this deck. You're not gonna summon it too often, but when you do, it is quite often strong especially versus decks like invoked they basically can't play around there are very very few ways to play around in Shuri Beast unless they have a droplet and send a monster or use something like ghost ogre because Shuri Beast has to remain on the field to resolve its effect properly um, this is a really cool application I really like seeing this in this deck um, I don't think it's the best card to turbo into if your deck just summons Nature Beast, but in addition to say Baron or Griffin or anything like that, I think it's a really, really strong card. I really like seeing this card in the format again. I um, hate playing against it, but it's very, very cool to play. And then of course the Fibrax cards, Fibrax and Aurorodon. You guys need to know what this what these cards do. I'm not going to even go into detail. They just kickstart your entire combo. There are ways to play the Scythe Lock without the Aurorodon ones. I think they might be a little bit better overall, uh, but I still think the Aurorodon Fibrax plays have a lot of merit too, and they play around some cards differently. And then we have two Monk of the Tenyi. And these are just to go into, um, you know, monsters for your Tenyi effects. Um, summon a Tenyi from the hand, turn it into a Monk. Sometimes you'll need it, often you won't. Uh, I don't think you ever really need to play three. I think two is what you need to play, but you definitely need to play at least two. The second one will come up more often than not, um, especially in really awkward game states going second. Um, so yeah, so that's the extra deck. I really like this extra deck. The only card I would like to see is Herald of the Arc Light. Now, I don't think this version can really play that card because there aren't too many ways to get to a, let's see, a level four. So I guess you could use an Auroradon token plus a level one tuner like Deskbot. So you can, that gives up your UZ. Um, so there are ways to do it. I don't think it's great. You could also reduce the level of a Sword Soul token by banishing Emergence. Um, that is a play too because it's a worm. Um, I would like to see that card though. I think you could play that instead of the second Chi Shao. I think that would be a really cool thing moving forward, but otherwise the extra deck's really nice. I think it's smooth. In this version, I think you do need to play the Double Baron for the protection unless you're playing maybe even Arc Light. That's a possibility too. So maybe in that case you can switch out a Baron for Arc Light, play something else for the instead of the other Chi Shao, something like that. Uh, but yeah, otherwise I really like the way this deck plays. And then we have the side deck. I know he's playing the Gamma. I know he said that Gamma came up quite a bit as well as the Token Collector. Gamma is for when they Shotgun Lance you in the standby phase, because they know you're playing the Tenyi cards. They're gonna do that, you know, more often than not, especially game one, if they are also mating Lancia, they will do that. Game two, uh, you know, game two and three, when you have the Gamma, they will do it 
more often than not they have it. You just gotta do it. Especially game two, say your opponent scoops and you, you know you have no idea what you're playing. I would put in Lancia, so say that they play Prosperity, something like that. Um, turns off all those cards too. Um, really, really strong cards. I'm glad that Gamma is gonna be seeing play in this form. It is seeing a lot of play already. Um, I really like that card. I used to hate it. Now I think it's one of the coolest cards ever made. Um, we have Token Collector. Yeah, I'll play this card. Stay easy three of in every single side deck at least. Um, some decks can play just one if you're playing something like a Burning Abyss deck where you can mill it. You gotta play this card though. At least at one, but m more often than not three because uh, basically every single deck in the game is playing a token. Um, whether it be Rite of Erebusir or Sword Soul or Roared on anything like that. You gotta play this card. Uh, <laughs> it just destroys them. Really good for versus the mirror. Force them to have a response. Um, shuts down some plays, uh, most plays more often than not, if they don't have a response to it, you gotta play it. That's all. Triple Lightning Storm, one Cosmic, and one Red Reboot. This is all the back row hate for going second, especially versus Eldritch. Because Eldritch is not affected, at least the trap version of Eldritch, not that I would play that or think that's too good, that's what it's for though. Um, you know, there's the, of course the Ozone Classic. Uh, Cyber Skagit Eldritch. Um, I don't know if I'd play those necessarily against this deck, but it's there, at least for Trap Eldritch. I think that's definitely the more popular version of the deck, um, or any decks that play uh, Eldritch as a side engine as well. Um, they're going to be pretty popular, um, just because people like to play that deck too. Um, and the Lightning Sword is just a really good card going second anyway. Yeah, and so then we have the Triple Solemn Judgment. This is the one of the only cards that can negate droplets. Um, unless they send a trap, which not too often that they're going to do that, um, but maybe enough. Also, you know, cards considered like anti-spell. That's another way to, to prevent droplets from hitting you. If you go anti-spell and draw a phase and standby phase summon um, your scythe, then you're protected. Judgment's also just really good from getting dark ruler in case you can't do the scythe or if they've already, if you scythe locked your opponent, they activate an dark ruler no more trying to play through your board, even versus, I don't know, if you're playing like versus Eldritch or something. Um, like pure trap elders, whatever. They try to summon big monsters like Lord of Heavenly, uh, Heavenly Prison. Cool. Now they can't. They can't do anything about it. So I really like the side deck. I honestly don't see any reason to change it. <laughs> I think just the list overall, besides again the extra deck, I think this is a really really solid list. Even though I don't like a lot of the cards in here, I don't like Droplet as a card. Um, I still see a lot of merit in playing it. I know it might make some people angry, but that's okay. Um, I think it's still a really good card right now, um, just because it, it just it negates so much. You, you kind of have to play it, um, but I think the deck was built very well. Probably just some unlucky matchups, maybe die rolls. Um, just a lot of random luck factors in there, which is okay. That's part of the game. And really, if you wanted to cut it, you could theoretically play Chalice instead. I don't think that's better, though. Um, I think that's a little bit worse than Droplet this format, but I still think it's worth looking at. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna link the original profile in here. I'm not trying to, you know, take views from him or anything. I, I really just like this deck. I absolutely love the way this whole deck works. I've been waiting for a good stuff deck for many, many years. Um, there was a deck in the OCG that played very similarly to this deck in 2018. It was called Good Stuff Link. It was when Dandelion was still legal and when OCG first got Karubini, Evan Angel, The Burning Abyss, and Fibrax when we didn't even have those cards. You know, Karubini didn't come out until May of 2019. We didn't have any of that, but they were running a bunch of Nightmare combo decks because Nightmare had, or Nightmares had just come out with Flames of Destruction in the OCG. This is around February to like May of 2018 in the OCG. This reminds me of that a lot, even though it's not fun to play against because this has Scythe. You know, even if Scythe were gone, I think this deck would still have a lot of merit. Um, you wouldn't play, I don't think, all the same cards, but something like this is just really, really creative deck building because it plays a bunch of different themes that just work together. It is literally just good stuffs. You play a bunch of nice link cards. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. I'll link that, like I said, original profile in the comment section below. I mean, I really like this deck. I'm excited to see where this goes. Again, only thing I don't like as you know, as a player is the Scythe Lock because it's just so ridiculous, but that is how the game is right now. Eventually we'll see it gone. I'm sure this next list will see it gone, uh, but that's really my only thing about it. I think this list overall, again, congratulations to Luke. He did really well in this, in this event. We're gonna have a kind of an analysis pretty soon about the top eight for this regional, as well as maybe some of the lists we saw in that regional, this Cardiff regional. I don't know what you guys think. I'm curious what you guys think in the comments section below. So this is Eric with Ozone TCG. See you guys in the next one.